Here is a mouth, and specifically, all you really know, in all honesty, is that it is a squamous mucosa overlying connective tissue. In addition, there are some uh, mucousy or glands here, which are accessory uh, salivary gland uh, tissue, predominantly mucus rather than serous. You could say that there are no skin appendages, so you certainly couldn't call this skin. But normally, the stratified squamous mucosa of the oral cavity does not keratinize. In this case, it does keratinize. You could see that not only is there a stratum corneum, which there shouldn't normally be in the mouth, but it is thick. And the general rule in nature is that whenever a stratified squamous non-keratinized mucosa is subject to an increased amount of mechanical trauma, uh, abrasion, and so forth, it will develop normally uh, a thickened layer of uh, keratin. That's why portions of the hard palate may be keratinized, but the soft palate usually isn't. Uh, and this is a normal reactive process that any stratified squamous mucosa might have if it's subject to increased trauma. Uh, also, I might mention that herpikeratosis being defined as an increase in the stratum corneum, you know, where there are no nuclei, is almost always goes hand in hand with a process called acanthosis which is defined as an increase of number of cells in the so-called uh, prickle cell layer or an increase in number of cells where the squamous mucosa is, uh, has nuclei, the cells have nuclei. This is a re benign reactive hyperkeratosis in the non, usually non-keratinized stratified squamous mucosa of the oral cavity.